Hi friends, my name is Kathleen Blackie and I am on the Fresh Expressions team as the strategic, uh, as coordinator of strategic initiatives. I want to tell you a story this morning. Uh, this story is about the church that my husband and I serve. We have been there about 14 years and we love the church we serve. Uh, the first year, however, was a challenging one. About six months after we arrived, my husband and I were sleeping at our house and Judy, one of the members of our church, she ran to our house and was standing outside our bedroom window and she yelled in our be bedroom window, Chris, Kathleen, the church is on fire. And in just a few short hours, we lost the 176 year old building to a fire. It was a really, really difficult time for our church. However, there were a lot of things that we could be thankful for in those early days. And one of those things that we could be thankful for was that the town was amazing and they allowed us to use the town hall to worship in. And we did that for several years. And it was a good building. It worked for our needs, but it wasn't our building. And I remember when we moved into our new building, worshiping the first time in our sanctuary. There is something special about worshiping God in a building that was in a space that was designed to worship God in. I don't think that the space is more holy than other spaces. We can worship God inside or outside, uh, in our homes. But there was something special, especially after we had gone so many years without a building. I really appreciate uh, that learning that lesson over the years. I'm going to read for you a psalm today. This is Psalm 99. Now I'm recording from a hotel room, so I'm going to have to look away to read to you. But this psalm is all about worshiping. The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob, you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. I love the book, uh, A Royal Waste of Time, The Splendor of Worshiping God and Being Church in the World. It's written by Marva Dawn, and she comes from a different tradition than I do. I come from a Baptist tradition, but I love reading uh, books from other perspectives. And I love the title of Royal Waste of Time because it highlights two things. One of them is that nothing is really accomplished when we worship God. Uh, after I leave church on Sunday mornings, I still have dishes that I have to wash. Everything is put aside to worship God. And I love that idea. Uh, 
I also like the royal part of the title because it causes us to remember why we are wasting our time. We are wasting our time because God deserves it. Worship reminds us that life is much more about God than sometimes we uh, live our lives believing. Uh, Psalm 99 reminds us that God is holy because he is good. In Psalm 34, we read, taste and see that the Lord is good. God's goodness is a part of who he is. He is powerful and he is just. And we can praise God for he is holy. Now we know that he is holy because um, he causes us to want to worship him. God gives us a reason to waste our time in worshiping him. Uh, here's the thing though, even though God gives us more than enough reason to worship him, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we might find ourselves complacent in what's comfortable for us. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am, uh, I love routines. Um, and I love the routine of Sunday mornings. I love how it starts my week on the right foot. And when I miss it because I'm sick or because one of my kids is sick, uh, it throws me off. It feels like uh, a really, really long week that just never ends. And we can also find ourselves um, in a, that we can fa fall into a trap. We can find ourselves less of being uh, worshipers and more of what Marva Dawn calls um, being religious consumers. And what do I mean by religious consumers? Uh, a religious consumer is someone who goes to church and is active in church, but whose faith hasn't grabbed hold of all of his or her life. We may have all the right desires, we might may feel connected to God, but there's no spark. Uh, and sometimes uh, we might find ourselves confining our worship to just Sunday mornings. Not because we don't want to worship him, but because we just fall into that rut. But I've found over the years that the more we worship God, the more we are amazed by God. And the more we are amazed by God, the more it will affect everything we do. Now, sometimes we find ourselves in seasons where it's more difficult to worship. And what do we do in those seasons? We can find ways to worship God at home or where the others. It can be as simple as, um, singing a worship song after dinner every night. It can be um, setting a day aside for Sabbath and including worship in that time. Now, sometimes we don't always feel as connected to God, but, it, but we can still have, find opportunities to worship him. And the more we worship him, the more likely we're gonna find ourselves feeling more connected with him. Now we're in the season of Lent right now, and in my tradition, it's not not as big as uh, other traditions. And but I find myself um, when I choose to participate in Lent, um, I look forward to Easter um, and all that surrounds Easter much more than when um, I don't uh, I don't participate in Lent. And there's all sorts of things that we can give up for Lent. But my encouragement to you is to fill your life with more worship. It's, uh, it's a waste of time, but it is so worth wasting our time. Would you pray with me? Lord, I am so grateful that we can find ourselves 
in awe of you. Lord, I thank you for worship. I thank you for the times that we can connect with you and that we can sing and we can praise your name. Lord, help us find opportunities to worship you more, to be amazed by you more, to fill our lives with you. I pray during this season that you would help us to reconnect with you and to fall in love with you once again. I pray this in your son's name. Amen.